All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to Under the Arch Sports. I'm Eric Hobbs. And I'm David Woldenkin. And Kaka is the law once again as the St. Louis Battlehawks are getting ready to kick off the 2024 season with the new UFL. And we're here to preview the season. First, I need you guys to do me a favor, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and leave us a comment about what you think is going to happen this season. And then also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on X. All right, David. Battle Hawks are back, man. What do you think? Um, I think they're going to be a really, really, really good team this year. Um, their offense pretty much stays the same. They brought in a couple of wide receivers from teams that were consolidated during the merger. Uh, defensively, they stacked up on some players, again, through the consolidation draft, if you will, to uh, strengthen their weakness, which was a run game. So they picked up some extra D linemen, linebackers, and corners that could help stop the run, if you will. Yeah, you know, I think that run defense is going to be so huge just because the offense, to a certain extent, you know what you got. And A.J. McCarron, you have maybe the best player in the league, all right? And then the combination of him to Hakeem Butler was just lethal. And then Darius Shepard on the other side, those three returning on the offensive side of the ball right there makes St. Louis a dangerous offense. Now, they don't have Brian Hill. You may recall the running back. He was hurt a lot, so it's not like he was a workhorse for all 10 games a year ago, but when he was there, he was awesome. Not not going to have him this year. But yeah, it, that run defense, just having to be decent would be monumental for this Battlehawks team. Now, you know, when you look at the competition, uh, it's interesting with the merger and if you're not quite up to speed on everything, just pay attention to the little ticker scrolling across the bottom. I'll have some of the basics as far as how they uh, made everything come to be. With, you know, St. Louis and D.C. being in the XFL conference, that makes sense. Perhaps the two best teams from the XFL a year ago. And then you have San Antonio and Arlington. Arlington, well, they were your champion, so of course they're going to be there. But it's not like they were the best team all season. They had, a, a honestly, a little bit of a miracle run. They went, I believe, four and six in the regular season. And San Antonio was not that good either. But they were not going to get left out because they got Dwayne The Rock Johnson's name. He's all about the Brahma. That's his thing. And then this is the franchise that had... That name, so of course they're going to be there. So I think St. Louis and D.C. were done a favor by those two teams being included in the new UFL. And the schedule could be, you know, everything could change. But based on last year, it could be an easier schedule than simply just taking the four best teams from a year ago. Well, and I would argue with you on the fact that the teams that remained – uh, we're not taken because of records or anything like that. St. Louis and DC were taken because of their established fan bases. The Texas teams were taken because everything is based in Texas, and you're talking travel costs and cutting costs in the league. So yeah. they're going to pick all the teams closest to Texas. That's why you have Memphis, Birmingham. Uh, if you look at St. Louis, DC, they're kind of the outliers along with uh, Michigan. But then again, if you also look closely, they're all kind of in a straight line geographically. So easiest travel distances, if you will. Uh, that's why you don't really see East Coast or West Coast teams is they're trying to cut costs. Oh, that's, def that's definitely true. If you, you go from, call it San Antonio, and you just take a swath of America and go northeast to Detroit, it is a straight line kind of that – it does include everybody but DC in this league. That is absolutely true. I do wonder, you know, if yeah, if Arlington didn't win win the league, would they still be uh would they be a part of this? Maybe for all the reasons you said, but maybe not. Yeah. Absolutely they would because that's where they practice. That's where their camps are. Everything is based in Arlington. So yes, they would be there. And see 
could they could have done everything with the USFL in Birmingham too. But I think the fact that they are there for whatever reason, I think it's a favor to St. Louis and DC just because uh, for example, Seattle was better. That, that's all I'm trying to say. Now, you know, what, what's nice in terms of scheduling, David, is you don't have to wonder, is it a home game or a road game? They For the Battlehawks, it's kind of nice. It's every other. You start the season on the road Saturday at Michigan, and then it's just road home, road home, road home the entire season. And that's convenient. Uh, it is for the fans, especially because now you don't have like three weekends in a row of football. And yeah. not not to say it gets old. It's just that's a lot of time taken up in three weeks. So yeah. with it spread out a little bit, um, makes me miss it just a little bit. Makes me want to get out, get after yep. it when it comes around. Uh, really, really good schedule in my opinion. Yeah. And of course... Battlehawks may be playing with that extra chip on their shoulder, extra motivation, because a couple, two, three weeks back, the UFL announced that the Battle Dome will be hosting the UFL championship game at the end of the season. So a huge opportunity to potentially play a championship game in your own stadium. Most definitely. Uh, and if they have the best record in the league, they could potentially host both playoff games. Yeah. So there's that too. Um, I will say now that both leagues are consolidated, your talent's consolidated too. So I think you're going to see among all the teams, much better talent and much better play. So it's really something to keep an eye out, especially this first week, just to see how the league looks as a whole. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there were times where you could say, Ooh, you could just tell. These were guys who were pretty good in college, but you can see why they're not in the NFL. You're still going to see that because they're not in the NFL, but I don't think it's going to be as glaring uh, to your point. And, you know, back to the championship game business. If the Battle Hawks can make it, you better believe that the Dome, the Battle Dome, will be sold out. I have full confidence that that would happen. Oh, and Yeah. You know, they drew, what, 38,000, I believe, was the biggest crowd a year ago. Smash it. I think they'd sell out a championship game. With them opening up the upper deck for the whole season, not just a couple of games, um, I could see them come close to averaging around 40. Uh, You get into the playoffs, they could potentially open up everything. Yeah. And no reason not to. Yep. And now – for a prediction, David, I think we're both of the same mind that I think we would expect, you know, Kaka is the law against the beer snake for the XFL conference, that being the DC defenders. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, if I had to make a prediction on the season, I was saying eight and two for the Battle Hawks with losses to D.C. and uh, Birmingham Stallion because uh, we haven't really talked about them, but they were the UF, USFL champion two years in, in a row. So they got a really good coaching staff down there and a really good system and team setup. So they're going to be a tough one to beat too. Yeah. And, you know, uh, for me, I don't think they'll be eight and two. I think they'll be, I think they'll be seven and three. You got to remember that though they're a better team, two of their wins a year ago, the first two were not quite miraculous, but they were pretty wild. The first one being in San Antonio with the late score, the instead of the kickoff, the fourth and 15 play, and then the other score right as time was winding down. Uh, I do take full credit for that, uh, seeing as though I was there in person. Um, and then the, uh, the Seattle game with the last second 56, was it yard field goal in the terrible weather to win the, that game? The, those are two games the battle Hawks could have easily lost. Yeah. But good teams find a way to win. All right. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm not ready to go eight and two, 
But I do think they, they'll be good, and the run defense will make them better. So I'll go 7-3. and three. Now, I guess the real question is, are you going to make it to the games down there? I would love to. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But in, until then, uh, stay tuned. We'll keep you guys updated on all things Battlehawks. Uh, guys, the season's about to start. First game's on Fox. Make sure you check it out. It's going to be fun. And thank you guys for watching Under the Earth Sports.